In addition to the claims that Jesus makes about himself in the New Testament, there are also reports that he performed the miraculous, that he walked on water and healed the sick and turned water into wine and, and raised the dead and did exorcisms. And so I had to know, uh, is there evidence that these miracles are a result of his divine nature? Jesus' contemporaries, that is people who liked him, people who were indifferent, neutral, and people who opposed him, all acknowledged he did extraordinary things. Now, of course, the people who liked Jesus and believed in him and followed him said, Jesus did these powerful works because of the Spirit of God. People who opposed him would say, well, I admit he does these amazing things, but it's because the devil is helping him. The Talmud actually speaks of some of these things in some of the passages that deal with Yeshua. It has him as a, well, a magician. And why do they describe him as a magician? It's, it, it's not flattering. There's a historical recognition here that when Yeshua came, he did miracles, just as Isaiah 35 indicates in the Messianic age, when the Messiah comes, he'll be able to make the blind see and the lame walk. The New Testament Gospels record at least 40 separate miracles performed by Jesus during the course of his ministry. They include healings, exorcisms, mastery over nature, and even raising of the dead. Christian theology has always held that these miracles are part of a total picture that displays the attributes of God himself. Unlimited power, total knowledge, ever-present, unchanging, eternal, there's no question that the biographies of Jesus describe him as a worker of mighty deeds. But I wanted to know, does this make him any different than the other miracle workers and magicians of the ancient world? Miracle workers that we find occasionally in the first century uh, are magicians. They use incantations, they use spells, they, they try to coerce um, gods or divine figures to work on their behalf. That's very different than Jesus' miracles. Jesus' his miracles were to demonstrate the power of the kingdom of God. When he healed the sick, he pointed back to Isaiah's prophecies that when God's kingdom would come, when God's salvation would come, the lame would walk, the blind would see. This was the demonstration that God's kingdom was arriving. He's an exorcist. You don't find any of those in the Old Testament. People were not looking for messianic exorcists. He carves out his own niche. He reveals his identity in his own way. It becomes clear that he is somebody who can take on the powers of darkness himself and win. What kind of person is that? And he doesn't have to use recipes and formulas like other ancient exorcists. He can just call the demon by name and that boy's out of there. One of the most astonishing things that Jesus did was when he claimed to forgive sins. In Mark's Gospel, chapter two, a man is brought to him paralyzed man, and the crowds around him are expecting Jesus to heal him. But instead, the first thing Jesus said is, your sins are forgiven. Only God forgives sins. Now, some might say, well, Jesus may have been forgiving sins on behalf of God. But in fact, that's not the way his listeners understood him, because immediately the religious leaders responded to that. Who is this that forgives sins? Only God forgives sins, they claim. But Jesus claims the ability to forgive sins. And then to confirm that he has that authority, he then heals the man. 